Hello, it's Sarah. And see how nice it is to come down in the morning. And it's ready to go. We're ready to trace on our pattern. Everything's smooth. Actually, I could probably just sand this a tiny bit because this feels so smooth. Anywho, put that aside for a second. Look what I have. It's my new diffuser. Well, the lid is over here. So I just ordered some essential oils from Eden's Garden and they haven't come yet and they haven't even shipped which I'm a little disappointed because I ordered them on the 30th and it's already like the 4th or 5th when is it today the 5th I think holy cow but look at my diffuser it's so cute it's kind of you know Indian inspired or like a little more mandala -y, I thought there's actually one that's definitely more Manelli. I was looking at them again, and I think it's like a medium-sized one. It's not the biggest, and it's not the smallest. And so all I have for oils right now are the ones I got from, um, uh, hello, what is it called? Um, the jewelry line, which I cannot think of it. Um, Origami Ale. Dude, sorry. So yesterday I was doing... No place like Ohm, which is a lot. It's kind of pepperminty. But I want to try a different one. I'm going to, I think I'm going to, and that's actually on the top of the box. It says Calm. And it has lavender oil, uh, lang lang, and chamomile, and sandalwood. So it was very, it, it smelled pepperminty though. But today, I think I want to do pep in my step. I've had, actually, you know what? Let's do balance. Balance is just because I feel like, because I have fit and energy. And I just had a cup of um, coffee, and I really don't need any more energy. But I'm going to do balance. The great balancing act. So I'm going to put, put like two, two drops is probably plenty. And these are actually uh, made by Origami Al. One too. That should be plenty. And so I don't know ratings wise or anything. I mean, they're hundred percent pure essential oil. So I assume they're, mm, I'm getting something from that. That has it. And then it comes with the origami owl ones. Ugh, they come in this little kind of thing. Sorry. I know I'm supposed to be painting, but anyway, the great balancing act, it says Lang Lang, Ylang Ylang, has been known to improve emotional balance and improve feelings of exhaustion. Lemon peel has been used as a mood enhancer and promotes spiritual awareness. Patchouli is widely used to fight depression and can help improve feelings of tension and anxiety. Alrighty then, that is awesome. So there's orange peel, some... Uh, Lang Lang, orange peel, lemon, citronella oil, celery seed oil. So there's a bunch of stuff. These are mixes. They're not like the straight up. Um, and I ordered a couple just regular plain one thing. Like I don't remember what I ordered actually because I got a, um, a create your own set from um, Eden's Garden. Um, oops, I got to put the little top on first, this part. This is really cute though. It just, it has um, a timer. It, I think it was around $25, but it lights up. It has lots of different light, light. Um, let's see if it works without the plug. Now I thought it was like battery, but then anyway, so then the, the diffused, like vapors, the vapors come out the top. Let me just go set it up. I'll be right back actually, and we'll get to painting. Okay. I can smell that. I don't know. Some um, They say some oils are a lot stronger than others or whatever. I'm in my craft room, which is, I don't know, 12 by 12 or 15. It's not a big room. Um, so, But I'm smelling that really strong, so we're going to see how it feels. Um, new to essential oils, but um, I love that they're natural and they come from plants and all that good stuff. Um, so what I want to do next... We've already, in the previous video, we base coated our board, got it all sanded, and I did the back and everything, so I am ready to go. I've already gathered up some of the colors that I'm using. Um, I don't have all the colors that are in the pattern. Actually, this is just a reminder, this is a pattern packet, a free pattern. Um, 
by Renee Mullins of Plum Purdy Design. So I printed it out and I've already traced the pattern onto tracing paper. So you take, let me just, I'm going to go through, this is a very beginner um, tutorial guys. I'm really going to go through everything for you so you have no problem. So she gives you, you get the directions, the pat, let me move my paint, move over paints. Okay. So when I traced it, I just kind of set it up like this because I ha we also cut the wood. So I just traced this out onto a piece of wood. We cut the wood out and sanded it. So um, anywho, so you just line this up right here and right here I can see through and see how the watermelon lines up. I just laid tracing paper on top of that and traced it out with my pencil. So I ha now have transferred the pattern onto a piece of tracing paper. So I'll set that aside and I usually just use this as a reference because I don't always trace all of the lines like I didn't trace the little dots or I mean I actually did trace quite a bit like I wouldn't necessarily trace the seeds anything that I can freehand because I'm a pretty I'm a proficient painter shall we say all right so then you take your piece sometimes it helps if you can tape it down um, if it's a big intricate design with a lot of lines on it, you might want to do that. But for this one, I'm just winging it, you guys. That's how I roll. That is how I roll. Just lining it up. Now, I know for sure that Renee sells stencils with all the seasons on them because a lot of her projects revolve around the seasons. Um, other things like there is going to be some diamond, a diamond pattern stenciled onto the watermelon. I have one from, you know, Michael's or whatever. But just get this lined up where you want it. So see the watermelon's going to sit right on that line. Stop, Kiwi. Oh, darn. I need my, um, oh, darn it. My light-colored tracing paper. I think it's right here. I mean, not tracing paper, carbon paper. So, in other words, I have dark and light carbon paper or uh, what else would it be called there's other graphite paper I have so much so let me just pull one that's already been used so this one looks pretty good and you just want to make sure that it's on the side facing down this needs to transfer onto the pattern so we want to when we put it under there and then I'm going to use a stylus just a ball tool and I'm just going to hold it down here and then I'm just going to stick this under here. I wonder if it'll, I think it will show up on the, um, the light colored paint too. And then I'm just going to, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, I'm a little forward. I'm just going to, ugh. See, I have to reline everything. Sorry, I just want to make sure I'm in the shot. That's one of my pet peeves. I don't like when I come out of the shot. So you just want to line this up. And I'm doing this all in real time for you guys. I'm not going to speed it up. I could have done this off camera. But like I said, I want this to be a really beginner um, tutorial for you. So you can see it exactly as I do it in real time. No problems. Okay. So then I'm just going to gently... And you can use a pencil. You don't have to have a stylus. You can use anything that will rub off and I'm not pushing too hard but you can definitely see that um, I am going to trace now these are considered strokes in the decorative painting world this shape here that I'm doing this teardrop shape and you can actually just make that with a filbert brush or a flat brush without having had having traced the lines on here but this is such a beginner piece. It's not calling for us to do that. It is perfectly okay for us to just base coat them in. And I like that we can just get that shape just so, and even the leaves, I could just plop these down really fast and easy with a nice big filbert brush in one stroke. But this piece is a little bit of, um, a base coating it's not a stroke piece in other words so we're just gonna paint uh, first with sand which I don't have sand I think I'm gonna use um, antique white 
can't, I guess, you know what, I Google, um, if you Google deco art and then the color, you'll come up with like a swatch, little swatch thing of the color so you can compare it to other colors that you have in your stash, which is exactly what I've done for the, let me think of the name she said, well, I think it's called Watermelon Slice, the name of the pink or the red that she uses for the, to paint the watermelon, and I don't have it. Kiwi, I am going to put you away. She just like nibbles. I think it's my bra strap she's trying to get, but man, what are you doing? And then you just kind of can go like this to see what you've gotten so far. I'm not going to put the stems on because I'll just wing them, you know? All right, let's see. I got to focus for a minute. Sometimes when I talk, that's why I always say that painting is my meditation. It is a way to focus your mind on one thing, and that way you block out all the other stuff that the world has to offer, which is too much sometimes. I'll go ahead and put this little guy on here. I love dragonflies. I love critters. I love them all. Anywho, um, yes, so it can be very meditative, I like to say. Um, so hence my essential oils, which that is a strong one. The, um, the peppermint one that I had in last night was a lot more chill, and maybe that's because it's called Calm. This one is Balance. I don't know, man. We'll see. I'm going to see how I like it. I know for sure that... Um, they have healing properties. I don't know that I'm fully on board with it all. People are adding them to recipes and cleaning products and so many things um, in a way to get away from all of the artificial pesticide stuff or, you know, artificial harmful ingredients that there are. All right, now to get this line straight, I am going to take my ruler and I'm going to hold it here gently I can't really see that you know what I have to be below it sorry gently hold it and just gently chances are I won't paint it that straight but at least I got a good line to begin with gently just take your hand and follow best you can. This is the thing. Um, I don't know how Renee does her line work, but they're pretty darn straight. And um, this is not Renee's. After Once I get my hands on it, it becomes mine. And I'm very thankful to her for creating these pieces for us. But I'm, I'm able to tweak it and make it my own. Um, early on in decorative painting, uh, we, in the rooms, I would hear people really struggle to get the piece to be just like the teachers, but that really, you know what, I'm not going to put that line on right now because we're going to undercoat everything. Um, let me see if these little leaves are showing up. Yeah, I think I'm going to put these little ones that are kind of sticking down here. I'll be able to see them, probably not so much on camera, but, and my nails are beat, you guys. I had the um, powder dip, oh, I love that powder dip, but man, it did a number on my nails. Well, I took it off myself, probably not the best move, but, you know, because we weren't allowed to go to the salons and, it messed up my nails so bad. But if you ask me would I do it again, I probably would because I really liked it. I'm very um, rough and I s tend to smash my hands into things a lot, <laughs> like doing laundry. I'll just bang it on the, like I'm just a mess. I'm a wreck. Anywho, um, so that, I think I'm pretty done. So now we have our pattern on the board. 
anywho, um, yes, I would do it again. They just look so pretty. And as I get older, like, look, look what happens to your hands when you get older. And I really don't feel old at all, but my hands say, you're old. Dang it. I'm turning 56 this month. All right. So that is how you trace your pattern on. I'm going to put that aside. Now, go back to the directions. And it says, are you ready? Let's paint. And I always keep the painted, the piece, the picture she puts in it. I'll put this with, just put it up here so I can have it as a reference. I'll just put it over there so I can look at it. We're going to undercoat. I'm going to do my best to follow her directions. I, I do cut corners a lot, but... Um, <laughs> undercoat the design areas to be painted with sand. And like I said, I didn't have sand, so I'm going to use antique white. I feel like it's just something that's going to... Um, for the paint to sit on so that you can see the color because if you put red on top of black on top of a dark blue it's not gonna you're not gonna see the color for a lot of coats so let's do that now I shake my bottle always and um, I put out a puddle about the size not very much you can always add more you know you don't want to waste it um, to base coat I like to use a flat brush and these are actually Brushes, I've gotten brushes from everywhere, and the ones that I like, I do like a cheap brush. If it does the job, I don't, I am not a splurger on brushes as much as some people might be. I have, look at all these different brands, so many different brands. I also like to use a round brush to base coat. So to base coat, meaning just to get the bottom layer of paint, oh, I'm spitting on there. I like to use a, a variety of flat or a round brush to paint. Now that's my choice. Some people, I think um, Renee likes filberts, which a filbert has a rounded top. So whatever works for you. And let's go. I am going to, we're going to jump right in with this big guy and I'm going to load. I could actually use this big brush. Nah, I'm going to just use, this is about a number eight. And that's the thing. All brands their numbers are different. It's like so weird. So, I mean, just work with what you have. So I'm going to take this number eight, go into my water bucket. My disgusting, I have clean water in it, but it's got paint all over it. And I have filled this, these bristles with water. It's soaked, right? But on my palette, I, I also have a, um, this is called a, I am a palette, it's palette paper, but I want to call it yeah, a paper palette. <laughs> and I have lots of, well, these have been used, but they're dry paper towels. I have a stack of those because I want to be able to take away some of the water. So I go into water, and I'm going to blot it on my paper towels. Just blot down and let the main drip come off of there. And then I'm going to pull from this puddle. I'm not just going to scoop up all that paint. I want to mix a little bit of the water that's in the bristles and the paint together and make a little slicker, wetter puddle of paint right next to that. And this is what I'm going to use to, to paint my... Um, I'm going to undercoat this. I do like to do um, one or two, I'm sorry, a couple of thin coats rather than one thick gloppy coat you can kind of just watch how i do that maybe i should zoom in but i don't want to zoom but i do like to keep picking up the ridges as i go i'm going back to water blot real i kind of blotted hard and i'm going to load my brush again and when i go up to those edges i let the brush do the work so i'm going to use the chiseled edge of the brush so the, t the top of it and just Go right up to that line that I drew with the um, ruler. Um, I see a loose hair on here that's going to drive me a little crazy. Yeah, I'm going to cut it off. I am very, like I said it with my nails, I'm rough on everything. I'm rough on brushes. I'm rough on tools. I, I force things. And that's why Al-Anon is teaching me about myself is I have to let go and and stop trying to force my will 
See, I had way too much water in the brush there. And let whatever will be, will be. Open myself up to get the help from my spirit. And I love it so much. I'm so happy. Um, sorry, I get, see this, you have to focus. You have to be able to focus and um, be in the moment. It forces you to stop. Let me move my water bucket. I gotta get my, my, my area feeling good around me. I don't want, I don't like when there's too much clutter. I have to put a few things away. Sorry about that. Because the whole point of art is to, I think now, first, of, first and foremost, I always just wanted the thing. That was my main inspiration. I was like, I want that, and I wanted to make it myself. Um, then, you know, I talked about in the previous video, the prep is not my favorite, but again, you can just be in the moment with it and think about, I mean, I may, this may be getting a little woo-woo for some people, but it's just about being present every day and appreciating what you have. And in this moment right now, I am playing with paint and it's fun and it makes me happy. It's light and easy and I want to appreciate that. And so I am just embracing it and knowing that, you know, everything changes and in another minute, a tree could fall in my front yard. I don't know. I mean, you know. So just try and appreciate what you have. And we're just going to get this undercoating on here. And if you notice, I haven't restroked a lot of the areas. I really have tried to not go back over where I've already gone. Just let it dry. It is what it is. And it's going to look um, patchy right now. So you can tell where I've gone over areas, but that is an undercoating. That is what we consider an undercoating. I'm just going to put that brush over there and go back to a little bit smaller. I'm going to pick up my number four flat brush. Get it wet. I want to load those bristles up with water first. Because this medium, the way I paint, it's a water-based medium. Um, I think people are just coming back from their walks. Um, so you can you use water to move the paint. So that is it's a it's part of it. This is we're gonna go water blot paint water blot paint. That's a constant thing. So I go water blot, and again I'm just gonna pick up from that puddle pull out some paint and load my brush with water and paint and we're just going to undercoat turn your piece make it comfortable for you don't fight if this is not fun don't do it find something else there's way too many other things to do than to just sit here and struggle through this you know, I mean, especially in times like these, you don't want to be doing something that's going to stress you out. Put it away. You know, if you're not happy, I, I have bad days where if I come in here, things just aren't going right. I will set it aside. I'm not going to torture myself and, and I will just go do something else. Go for a walk. Um, anywho, see, I'm getting a little woo-woo on you. But that's me, guys. Sorry. What well, for a while, I was kind of beating myself up um, for all the years that I spent crafting. I thought it was um, a cop out in a way that I wasn't um, facing some things that I maybe should have faced sooner in my life, and and I was kind of. Um, worried that the thing I loved the most was something that I was, I was using in a wrong way, but I've learned since that 
this feeds my spirit. I need to do this. This makes my spirit happy. And those things will get addressed when, when they're ready to be addressed. I, I wasn't ready. And now that I am, I realize that I can do both. And I need to do both. So when I wasn't coming into the craft room, it wasn't, I just needed to focus on other things. And now I know it's about balance. Thank you. No wonder. Mm. I just have a Q-tip and I went out of the lines. And while the paint is still wet, you can absolutely take it off. And if you hate, anytime you hate what you did, take it off. This isn't on here for, I don't know, it takes a little bit of time to cure, but initially, if you see it, right then do it. It's the best way to fix anything. So I'm just making sure I get up to the line. I need a little more paint. Ah, uh, buttermilk. Oopsie. And I went downstairs last night um, when I was getting ready to paint with you guys, and uh, I found so many paints. I have way too many. Ugh, I don't want to get into that. Now, is that the same color? I just used buttermilk. Dang it. I'm putting this back because this is my only buttermilk. And it's going to have a little bit of... Yeah, but this is my only buttermilk and I'm almost out of it. I meant to grab this one. Antique white. Sorry about that. My bad. Let me get a, um, a book wipe. <laughs> yeah, because the, the main, the two main paint colors that are used usually in the decorative painting world are uh, paint brands, I should say, is Americana and it's Delta, oh, I'm sorry, this is Deco Art Americana and then there's Delta Ceram Coat. I'm going to grab one of them. Delta Ceram Coat. These are the two, if you get a pattern packet, you'll generally have the colors from either one of these two brands. So I have a ton of those paints in my stash. And it, Renee's option is the, is the um, Americana. And so I kind of have been painting with that the most. But if I need to, I will go down and find, um, put this away, the comparable color. Because, I mean, they're close enough. Um, in the other brand. So I had to go find some greens because I didn't have a, uh, I think it's light foliage green I was looking for and I've had it for sure but I'm, I must just be out of it right now. Um, anywho, um, I found so many greens so, and brand new paints like literally with the package like the little plastic still on them. But see if you load your brush correctly it's so easy to, to lay this color down. Now, I generally, when I base coat, I do just like put the paint down in the middle and then start working my way to the edge gently. And I pick up what I put down. I use that paint, kind of. Do you know what I mean? Do they know what I mean, Jin Jin? What's your name? Kiwi? Don't bite me, Kiwi. And take your time, but see how I'm using, hopefully I'm in the shot, I use the chisel edge, that, that, that's why I like to use a flat brush, and by flat I mean this is the flat. They're all flat this way, but this. So a filbert is round like that, a round is a little more pointy, but you can flatten it out. So I'll show you that once we get down to these smaller things. Um, but I love base coating with a flat brush. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead, well, let me do these two bigger leaves down here. And I'll show you the difference then with a round brush, because I love base coating with a round brush, too. But you can let the brush do the work. And if you've loaded it correctly, if you have a nice, slick paint on there, because you've mixed it with some water, it'll just flow, oops, right off the brush. And then you start to get into a real like rhythm and flow. I'm telling you, this is going to be a quick piece. 
I mean, comparably, compared to some stuff that you do. This is real cute. This is a nice freebie that she did for us. It's so nice when they do that. Because then I can have the opportunity for us all to do something together. So these little leaves and these petals, I'm going to do with a round brush. And I might as well do my little dragonflies. And these little guys are already, um, uh, they're, they're, I don't need to put this on top of that. It's a light enough color. But I'm just going to go, so this is a round brush and I'm loading it the exact same way with a little bit of water in my brush. And then I'm just going to put, because it's sticking out onto the blue. Is that one? No. And then there's like little one, little one, little one, but I'll leave them. Let's come up here and do these. Um, petals of the flower. Um, I like to start at the fat end and pull it down. So I'm going to wiggle. See how wide the brush got for me just then? So you can, a round brush, you can just use the tip of the brush or you can flatten it out. So that's, oh geez, now I'm really coming out of the lines. And this one may not have a nice point like I would like, so I may switch it out. But this is an old brush. This is a Donna Dewberry one stroke brush. And I mean, it's got, it could be 20 years old, this brush. And the, the thing about um, Donna's techniques is she would load the brush up with so much paint. That was her technique because she wanted to get it done in one stroke. She would load it up with the, the base color, the highlight and the shading, and then pull it and it would, it would be done. So that was the, her philosophy, her style of painting. So the brush had to be able to handle that. And it turns out, it's pretty good. It's been handling it for a long time. Because I don't load it up like she did. But it's lasting. Okay, so look. So I'm just going to go in, put it down in the middle. And then just let the brush... See, I have a lot of water. I just pl I blotted it a little. Don't force it, right? We just want it to be... Um, an undercoating and then when we go in with the color which this is probably white it won't it'll cover so easily <clears throat> yeah I mean thinking I've been thinking a lot about um, the changes that have occurred in my lifetime so far um, with technology especially because um, we're all in isolation and having the, the um, resources of Zoom meetings and conference calls and things like that it's, a, it's a really a blessing in this time. That being said it's also it can be all you know people uh, are obsessed with technology too much so I have there's both sides of it you know um, I don't even have my phone with me right now. I have my watch on, so I'm not too far away from technology, but, um, what was I going to say? Sorry, I get so, oh, oh, uh, back when we were kids, we didn't, we had rotary dialing, like it wasn't. You know, I couldn't be talking to you guys right now in a virtual classroom. You know, it's kind of amazing that we have this right now. And so um, I haven't been doing my part for you guys as much. I've been really, well, it's spring, so I've been outside doing stuff out there. Um, I just want to be able to share what I love with you guys because I can. And it's really cool. I haven't forgotten about you. You know, I just had to take some time to do other things and um, balance. It's all about the balance, right? So I'm just so happy. Because I definitely tend to, to have be an obsession sometimes. I get, I get obsessed with things. I get, um, 
on a kick type thing. You know what I mean? Um, I've done it. I love to learn new things and do new things. So I, you know, when I'm when I go for something, I go pretty hard. So balance is huge in my life. I need to have balance. That's why I got this yin yang. But I asked her, I, my intention for this tattoo was for the black part to be purple and then this to just be skin. But she went in with black first. And then I was like, just fill it in with black purple. But I didn't want it like that. So be careful when, oops, too much water. And then see, like I have too much water. I'm just going to grab a piece of paper towel and I'm just going to go like that and it'll pick it right up. Um, yeah, be careful when you get tattoos and just make sure you blot. But balance, this has been from day one of when I um, started my journey in Al-Anon. Uh, thank you Al-Anon for sharing, for showing me that I can have balance. You can do things just to have balance because the reason um, because I wasn't happy, I was trying to make myself happy, but I didn't do it, anyway, I don't want to, you know, this is supposed to be about painting. So say gently, and I could have a better tip on here because I could really be pulling these, and I think I may just pull strokes when I paint these, to be honest with you, instead of doing this. Ugh, I didn't like that. I'm going to go to a different round that has a little bit more of a point on it. Um, look at this thing. It has no paint on it because I've left it in the water for too long. But I think this is a number one or two. It's a little bit smaller, but it has a much uh, more decent point. Just don't want it to be too wet. You can tell I, I have more paint on my brush for those but it doesn't this doesn't matter this is an undercoating so I'm gonna finish this off camera because we're just gonna be doing more of the same with color in a minute so I'll be right back all right now I jumped ahead a little bit because I wanted to make sure and I'm glad I did but it says undercoat the design areas to be painted with sand I don't know what whatever but then the dragonflies it says undercoat the entire dragonfly with titanium white so you can see I did that and then I'm going to also jump ahead to this bottom band. I'm just going to, we're going to get that out of the way too so that we can just go ahead and paint our leaves on there and not worry about having to come back to this. And it is to float some streaks um, on this bottom band with sable brown and blend back and forth with a mop brush. With titanium white, highlight along the top of some of the sable brown floats and then stencil or paint the lettering with antique maroon. So I'm going to go ahead and get out my sable brown. I'm pretty sure I have that and I should have done it. I don't know why I don't have it out. And I might, let me look, sable brown, burnt sienna. All right, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. That's weird that I didn't have that out. I'm going to grab my big favorite angle brush. Now, this is the first time we're going to do a float. And this is the perfect time for me to do this because we don't have... It's just going to be random. And then a mop brush, she said to use, right? So, this is an angle brush, and it's an American painter I've had forever. But I like it because it ha it's long this way. And so that means it has a lot of place to hold water. And it's kind of getting beat up because I have done mixed media with it. But in general, let's wet it and see what it looks like. In general, you do want the chisel edge, which I always call the chisel edge. The knife edge, I don't know. You want those hairs to stay together like that. And that's how you're gonna get a nice clean float. But I use other brushes. I also ordered this one from Tracy Moreau, suggested the squirrel, this faux squirrel. 
and it is see it's not near it's the same size they're both half inches actually this might be a three yeah this is a five eighths inch angle but it's just not as long I don't know this has been my fave it's an American painter they used to sell them oh AC Moore is closed I forgot like it literally closed down but this is a good floating brush. I can do. I like an angle brush to float with, and then I also have these. These are from the Artist Club, which is also closed now, and that's an online source. But pretty much an angle brush is an angle brush. It's just there's so many companies. I like a synthetic brush. I don't naturally usually go for a natural hair. Um, okay, so for right now, I'm using my big old favorite. And I'm going to corner load. And I have a mop brush. This is the Maxine's Mop. I think it's called Maxine's Mop. Maxine Thomas is one of my favorite uh, decorative painters. And she had this brush developed because she's a floater supreme. She is the master of the float. Um, and, and once I learned, I, took, I was able to paint with her twice. I took two classes with Maxine. And, um, you know... I'm just trying to pass on that knowledge to you. But there are lots of different brands of mop brushes as well. You don't need this one. I'm trying to see if I have another one. Like this isn't actually a mop, I don't think. It's a blender. But it could be used as a mop. It tends to look more like um, a blush brush. So it's a little more fluffy, but it's a, not as soft. It's a little more of a stiff um, Maybe there's more hair or something. Anyway, I'll show you. Okay. So I'll, let's look at the picture, too. So you also can use the picture as your reference. And so she just says to float some sable brown strokes across to give it a wood grain effect. It's simple. This is a cutesy piece. It's not realistic. Don't get worked up over it, okay? So we're going to go into our water, as always. Come on to my... Uh, paper towel, blot, and then corner load. So I like to use this pointy corner. I mean, I don't know if anybody ever used this one. Maybe. I don't know. Corner load. So I have taken a tip's worth of paint, and I'm going to come over to my paper palette and put all the bristles, so not just the tip, all the bristles. So it, because it's an angle, you have to go down like this and just go one. And I move the brush back and forth very subtly so that I'm loading this brush now. I have the darkest paint on this end and, my, and then it graduates in color until it's just water. I don't want any paint to come all the way over to this side. That is the purpose of the mop brush. When you think mop, you think water. So the purpose of the mop is to mop up the water's edge. I'll show you. Okay. So I'm still loading. I'm going to go back in. Because there's so much water on here, I'm going to blot. I'm going to take this loaded brush and just once tap it down and push down on my paper towel. Come back over to here. And that is a nicely loaded brush right now. Okay. And she said to just, what did she say to do? and blend back and forth with a uh, blah. Float some streaks on the bottom. So I'm just gonna take, am I in the shot? Okay, let me go up a little because I will forget. And just float some streaks. I don't know if this is what she meant, but that's what I'm doing. And then she said blend it back and forth with a mop brush. So I'm just gonna go like that and see what we get. I don't like it. I'm going to take a butt wipe. I'm going to take that off because remember I told you if it's not cured okay so that's okay if there's a little bit on there it's okay but what I'm thinking I'm going to do is do it a little more controlled. I'm going to be more specific so sometimes when you read the directions it's you know I have to think about it myself. So I'm corner loading. I'm going right back to where I just loaded the brush. And I'm just going to be more purposeful. 
So I'm not just going to wing it. I'm going to put one right at the top and maybe one a little here and here. So I'm trying to be a little more gentle too. And then we're going to add some um, lighter color too. So I think I kind of like that. I'll stick with that and just blend it back and forth like this. And this isn't the traditional way that you would use a mop, to be honest with you. You would pull from the water's edge. But I think we're going for a wood grain look, and I don't love that, to be honest with you. But I'm going to just, see, I'm a much more heavy-handed painter too, so look. See how subtle hers is? So she probably used a much smaller brush. That's the thing though. This is mine, and that's hers. So I have to accept this for what it is and work with it and be happy. Don't hate on my own work, right? I'm not Renee, so it's not going to look like Renee's. I'm going to play a little bit more. I'm just going right back in here and getting a little bit more of that paint. I'm going to put another one down here. For some reason, I just don't like that that gap was up there. And I need something over here that's a little darker. And this is where you can really just have fun and play. Just play. Don't take it so serious, you know? I think it's looking good. By the time we put the name on there and everything, it's going to be fantastic. Oh, by the way, to get this on there, I'll show you. Okay, so basically, what I'm doing with the brush, all right, so we've loaded it. So what you do when you float is the float part of it comes from what I'm doing is I'm floating that color across the bristles. That's what it means by float. The paint is floating on the water because, I'm, because of the way I'm loading it. That's, I think, why they call it a float. That's what makes the most sense to me. No one ever explained it to me the way I'm explaining it to you. Um, I'm explaining it to you this way because that's my take on it. And then, like so, I am basically putting all the bristles down on the surface and just going back and forth. And then when you would use the mop, you would just pull from the water's edge to kind of blend out, like to pull the color down a little too. But um, for the bottom there, it's not like uh, this is a... Thing. It's like it's an anatomy. It's a it's a tabletop. So I'm not really, you know. All right. And then the other part of it was to do with titanium white highlight along the top of some of the stable brown floats. So I'll do that too. And I have some titanium white out. I'm just going to hit this with my heat tool for a sec because with floats, if if it's still wet and it takes longer to dry when it's a float because it's wetter there's more water in the brush than a base coat. Um, if it's still wet, I would pick up what I just put down. So you just want to make sure this is definitely dry before you go touch it with the brush again. But that's pretty dry. So I'm going to go into my titanium white, which I still have on my palette. I'm going to show you this too. This is a super beginner beginner tutorial. I am telling you every detail of everything I'm thinking. But there's titanium white paint here that I use to base coat with. And it's got a little crusty on top of it, right? And you can either just take something and remove the crust. See, this isn't even that crusty. But there's wet paint under there. So if you don't feel like putting any more paint out, or sometimes when you're in a class, you know, you don't have your own paint to use and you don't want to have to go get the other, the paint again and read, whatever. I still can use this. So I am going to corner load. And this time, I'm going to go in this direction because she said on top. So I'm going to go, if I go right over it the same way I did, it's just going to go right on top of where I just did. But I want this to be, like, make the table look a little dimensional is the idea. So I'm loading the brush the same way, corner loading. Oh man, I am such a heavy hand. It's just hard for me to go light, man. All right, and let's just start, and I'm gonna work my way this way. 
put a little white here on top of that one and some here some down here so by on top I mean I'm putting the white on top of the brown well duh um sorry so I'm just playing and it is what it is I'm not this is the bottom thing it's not this isn't what's gonna catch our eye as much as the rest of it and now let's see what it looks like I don't know it looks weight it looks like a lot it looks extra this table's extra it's trying to be extra but guess what it is it's done let's see bottom band and then it says stencil or paint the lettering with antique maroon I'm gonna paint that by hand and I'm, I probably won't do that on camera I mean I might I might start it on camera so at least you can see all right but let's go back to watermelon I am choosing instead of watermelon slice I pulled these are the paints that I pulled from downstairs that I have a ton of see these are the um, Deco art, or I'm sorry, Delta Ceram coat. But, and I actually found a couple of Americana colors down there that I liked, so I brought them up. But this is what I'm going to use for um, the watermelon. Where is it? Red iron oxide. Because if I, and you can do it, you can Google watermelon slice Americana, and it looks the most like this. I really couldn't find a color. Americana color similar enough that I just wanted to go hunt around and find and I have tons of this anyway So see when I have tons of a color I want to use it, but it's red enough We'll see because this really has a it's a red, but it's a pink red So we'll see what this looks like it may be too dark I don't know and then I'm going to stencil on top of that with the checker thing the um, diamonds it says with antique maroon and again, I don't think I have antique maroon. What was I going to use? I have, this is called russet. And it's, I don't think this is red enough either. So I'll probably use this Sonoma. Sonoma is a lot redder. I think those two will look pretty. So that's really all that matters. You don't, you know, again, it's my piece. It's what I have on hand. Ugh. Do your best and just work with what you have. But this is going to be yummy. Now, I could trace on this little line that goes around here. But guess what? I'm just going to use a pencil. I mean, it would just be as easy to do it if I... You know what? Look, this is what you do. Um, I'm going to need the darker. So you take your tracing... If there were any other detail lines that I really needed, which I don't, all I could put on, I could put summer on right now, and I'm going to just put on the, um, what is it called, the rind. So this is cool because you can start to see through the piece so that you can line everything up nicely. And then I'm going to stick my, this is so worn out. Let me see. Uh, Hmm. Wow. This is really, really going to be light because my graphite paper is just toast. Let's see if it's even showing up. But see how I did not need to trace this on. I'm just showing you that this is because I could have wung it. I would have would have winged it. Will we will we would have wung it. Just making a little crookedy crookedy line. Man, I love watermelon too. Ooh, I could go for some. All right, that's all I'm doing. So now I can actually just put that. Um, I'm going to use red iron oxide by um, Ceram Coat. And I mean, this paint is so old. Shake it up real good. I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. And which brush shall I use? 
just rinsing off my angle brush and putting it down. Sometimes when you leave brushes in the water, it'll, like, you can mess them up. Like, obviously, look, all the paint will fall off of it. But, you know, look, I think every painter, every decorative painter has brushes like that because we ultimately will leave it in the water. Again, base coating. So I want some water in the bristles first. Water, blot, and then you pull from that puddle. And this looks a little too, oh, I'm going to try it. It looks too brown. Dang it. It's whatever. So anyway, watermelon slice will be on my list of colors to get because it's, it is a pretty color. And I'm going to need a couple coats of this for sure. So I'm going a little harder core. I'm, I'm not putting as much water in my brush. I'm going to gently go across. But see how I use the brush, the edge. This time I'm not using the chisel edge. I'm using the literal side of the, the literal, the side of the brush. Now I'm using the chisel to go up against that, um, the rind line I made. But I always come back and clean up the ridges. That's the secret to having a smooth, sometimes people have comp commented and complimented my work when they think it's a decal because it's so smooth. You don't see the brush strokes like in an oil painting, say, right? Brush strokes are part of the charm of an oil painting. I learned to paint this way, so I don't do wet on wet very well. I've tried it and I've taken classes and it is not easy to do once you've learned to paint this way. Um, that being said, I, lo I love a challenge and it's been fun. The classes I've taken, when you get a good teacher who can help you understand why you're doing what you're doing. Um, it really can be fun and um, you really feel successful when you achieve the, the look that you're trying to get. Because these are just techniques, guys. This is just techniques. Um, the tools are important, but also the techniques of knowing how to like load your brush. That's just a simple thing, but if no one ever told you, you know, you're not going to get the same result. Um, as I do because I I don't know I, I don't know if anyone ever told me to literally to do this um, maybe experience just taught me and I just decided to for myself because it it became like kind of a no-brainer like it's just the way I needed to do it type thing I haven't watched a lot of base coating videos lately or anything to see, but I do believe this is the way that most decorative artists would, would base coat. Yeah, I think so. Now let's have a look. That really, it looks red, right? It looks really red. It's not as pink as hers. Um, I'm going to need another coat on there, so we're going to move from the watermelon and go on and do something different. We're going to move to the leaves and the stems, base coat the smaller leaves uh, with avocado and base coat the other leaves with foliage green. So let's see, I think I have avocado, but I don't have the foliage green. Black green is my favorite to shade here. I have avocado. So avocado is this color. And if we look at the picture, she said base coat the little leaves, let's see, the smaller leaves that hang down in the center of the bottom border with avocado and base all the other leaves foliage green. So these little three right here are avocado and the rest are foliage green. So it looks like foliage green is a much brighter color. I might, I'm not, I'm not, I'm tempted, but no, that's way too bright. So I'm going to grab up this bucket again because I brought up a lot of colors last night that I thought would be kind of comparable to foliage green. I really liked these, leprechaun, chrome green light, and wedgewood. I'm liking the wedgewood. I 
think the Wedgwood's going to be the one. I mean, they're all so similar. Come on. Like, here's medium foliage green. I'm going to go with Wedgwood. I think I'm going to grab this. I have, And there's plenty in here. Like, these are full. So why would I get that, you know, get a different color when I have so much of the other... Just make sure I shake it real good. And only these three are going to be done in avocado. Just because they're on here. So shake it up. Shake it up. Alright, got that. And so we're doing leaves. So again, it's the same thing I just did. So I can kind of go off camera and do this. Because <coughs> it's base coating. So again, we're loading a flat brush. Blot it on your paper towel. Pull a puddle of a little bit slicker and wetter paint. And just base in those big leaves. You know what I could have done is erased some. I see tracing lines on here. So you can always erase those lines once you've based things. And I'm, you know, I'm going over it, or I'm, in other words, I'm. It's not going to be perfectly overlapped, but I'm doing my best. And I'll probably put two coats. Looks like I'm going to need two coats. funny because that sand color, which I didn't use sand, what I use? Antique white. On top of the blue has a kind of a greenish hue to it. So probably Renee knew that when she told us to do it. I don't know. So this is just the, the zen of decorative painting. It's a process that it's basically three steps base coating, shading, and highlighting. Which shading and highlighting is the same thing because you're just floating. So, um, yeah. Um, I'll finish these off camera and I'll be back. All right, it's looking good. I have a couple more things we're going to do in this video. And then I'm going to go for a number three, which will be the details. But I wanted to just show you that to put, to do these um, titanium white, I need, I want to just show you these petals. Because um, as I was painting, I was thinking, uh, there's an easier way to do it. And you stroke them in. This is a number one liner. So something like that is easy to make these petals because... If you start here and just pull it in two strokes, basically, it's just quick. I, I kind of thought of it as I was going and thought, well, I, let me just share that. So you put the paint down at the tip and just go up against one side and pull down and then go against the other side and you're done. And I kind of did it a little crooked, so just me being me, I'm going to take that off and just make it a little more straight. So then I'm going to do it again. So you just kind of put the paint down on the chubby part of the, and just kind of coast down this side, and I'm shaky, and then this side, and you're done. Like, it's kind of neat for petals to not be as opaque as some, like as the leaves were, because it get, it makes them feel uh, more alive. So you go down that side, and then that side and you're done because I it took me I would say I did probably two three coats on the um on everything else so but for these for the white I think it's gonna look just fine because we are gonna um well maybe I'll put a little more I think it would look just fine we're gonna put little lines in the middle of them turn your piece and I have a piece of gum I always turn my piece so it's more comfortable for me and I'm just going to go along one side and then along the other side and then you're done. Just kind of pull it down to the base of the, it's a little crooked, but that just makes it easier and, and they look a little um, 
patchy and it just gives them a little bit of character. Petals are curved and they're alive, you know, so if you make them a little imperfect, it gives that the realness because nothing is perfect, right? Although they look perfect, but they're really not. There is imperfections in there. Anyhow, so that's that one thing I wanted to show you. Um, and then the other thing is to do your stems. Uh, you're going to do line work, but I didn't put them on yet because I just wanted to show you. Because in the next video, we'll just be doing um, all the details, and that's where everything really comes together. See, I'm, I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Things grow on you, too, so just... Oh, oh. The, wind, the wind blew. My dogs just think that's incredible. Or my son came home from a walk or something. All right. So anyway, this is this. See? And then... So I'll do all that the same way. And then to pull the stems, I'm going to use, oh, look at this one. This is a nice long, it's called a Royal Majestic Zero, but it, it has long bristles and it's not real thick. The bristles aren't. I'm, I'm making a video. So let's see. We're going to go into... Yeah, that's called balance. Do you like the smell of that one? Not bad. Um, we're going to make the stems with base coat, shade, highlight, paint the center, center vein now. Huh. Stems and vines with foliage green. Okay, so I think I had that one, didn't I? No, I had avocado. I was using Wedgwood. I didn't have the foliage green, so I'm going to use the wedge. I'm pretty sure it was Wedgwood. And when you do line work, you get your paint nice and wet, kind of to the consistency of ink. So I'm going to kind of just have, I just go water, straight from the water, right to this puddle of green. And I'm just kind of getting a little wetter puddle. That I'm going to do it one more time so that I have plenty and I don't have to remix it a little bit. Then I'm going to rinse my brush, blot, and then pick this up. Let me look at, oh, excuse me. Let me look at my... Um, Got a, I look at the tracing a lot as a, ref, a reference to see, so I'm going to pull these lines here um, up into, so we're going to start, and you can trace these on, no doubt you can trace these on, but I'm just going to wing it, it's easier for me. I'm going to pull it from under here up into the center, ooh, a, ball, a little blob of water came down off my um, brush. Sometimes the water will be up here and you don't notice it and then it rolls down into your painting, so. But that kind of worked out. I got a little messy there because. All right, and then this one actually comes off of that. So I'm gonna just go like that. And then the little one as well, like that. You can't really see, but I'll, I'll turn, I'll go in deeper when I do this side. How about that? And there's always going to be one side that you're better, you, it just feels more comfortable to pull. So look, I've turned my paper over too, so that it really gives me a good idea of where I'm going. I'm going to just load the brush again. You kind of go up on the tip. See how I'm holding my brush up? And just kind of let it go free flow like that make one here 
and then these kind of have their own and that guess guess what that is guys it's good enough now this one could be a little more tricky because it's a straight down you know so doing a straight line isn't always easy and maybe I will no I'm gonna wing it I'm gonna wing it it doesn't have to be straight straight it's gonna start right around this petal so see here kind of off to the over to the left a little bit and then just kind of centerish here now I don't know if I can pull that way or if it would be easier for me to go sideways I'm gonna try the sideways approach first and I'm just gonna eyeball where my hand wants to go so kind of like when I was making mandalas this is what uh, Barb Owen would say you just kind of use your eye to draw the line in your mind and I'm just gonna put my brush down and move and hope for the best get it loaded make sure that paints gonna flow put my brush down and I think it's straight enough I'm gonna work with that one and then I'm gonna attach the other ones so this one I mean and guys feel free to to um, what is it Tracy's on but I um, I'm comfortable just winging it and letting it be whatever it is there's one here to connect him my little bird man she's being bossy I think since we've been on quarantine and there's so much there's a lot more going on in the house because usually it's very quiet I don't really put the TV on during the day I'm always busy doing whatever um, so with everybody being here she's like guys guys what's going on I want to know it's kind of annoying seriously I'm telling you all right and then this one kind of comes a little bit over and then it just goes up to this um, middle and then we just attach these <coughs> and this one is that everything I think so I think it looks good okay so I'm gonna come back for number three I'm gonna go up and I've also traced on I'm sorry um yes traced on or you know whatever the the word summer um we are going to do our stenciling in the next video and all our shading and floating and we're going to do the dragonflies. I think I might do them next because you mix the color, you mix this color with a little white to make them pink. So I'll be back. All this will be base coated to your final coat. So white here, everything looking good and ready to go for video number three, which is going to be shading and highlighting. All right, guys, thanks for watching.